Hey friends, it's Brecky, and I'm the Working Writer Mom, and this is a channel dedicated to balancing your career, your creativity, and your kids. And today I wanted to bring you a video on how you can get food storage fast, even if you don't cook. I know that a lot of the videos that I have seen and that I watched way back when I was first getting into it were primarily about having lots of pantry staples, how you store dry rice, how you store dry beans, how you store flour, how you store wheat in a wheat grinder. And while all that stuff is fantastic, those are kind kind of, I think, intermediate level prepper hacks and also those rely on a lot of skills in the kitchen that many of us just don't have anymore because we don't prefer to cook, we don't like to cook, we're too busy to cook. And so having a bunch of pantry staples that you don't really know how to use doesn't actually help you that much in the event of an emergency. So if that sounds like you, if you're someone who is not so savvy in the kitchen, but you do want to have a two to four week pantry stocked in the event that you do need to stay home, that another lockdown happens or prolonged illness happens, or there is a job loss and you want to have some food just in case, or whatever you could be facing, I have seven meal options plus a few extras that I think will help get you through a emergency. All right, the first thing that I recommend getting for a super fast short-term pantry is to get some of these Mylar bag pre-made meals. Now, this one is a Madras lentils meal that we picked up in a giant box from Costco. This is something that we already eat, and this is a lentils option, but they have all different kinds. You don't even have to go to Costco. This is a dal. This is another Indian meal, and we got this at Trader Joe's. They had a whole bunch of different varieties. So this is instant rice, and we do keep instant rice on hand in our house in case we realize we have forgotten to throw our rice in the instant pot and we need rice like right now. This takes five minutes. Um, this is basically rice that's been parboiled or partially boiled and then dehydrated so that the cooking time is super super slim you can get a box of this for like a buck or two at walmart which is what we did but having some of this on shelf i would repackage it if you were going to keep it on shelf for a whole year but having this on a shelf along with one of these uh like pre-made le like pouches of food this is a complete meal but seven of these and one box of this you would have more than seven meals available to you and that's a whole week of dinners right there boom taken care of. The second meal option that I want to give to you is a very standard one. It's one that everyone's going to recommend and that is going to be pasta and sauce. Pasta sauce and pasta last forever. You can put this on the shelf and it will last literally for years. <laughs> as long as no bugs get to it and no like mold gets to it, you can basically keep pasta indefinitely. The great thing about pasta and sauce is that you can get what you like and what you're willing to eat. Now maybe you're low carb or maybe you're gluten free, just buy the noodles that work for you. Have those in rotation. If you're someone who only would eat half a box of this for a meal, then get half a box and know that in order to have one month supply you need two boxes and then however much sauce calculate it out um just know that this is a great shelf stable item because you can keep it and use it and if you decide oh i'm gonna have pasta tonight you can then use use what you have on your shelf and then the next week go and add it to your grocery order and boom there you go this is also super cheap super cheap those pouches can get kind of expensive but Pasta and sauce can run you super, super, super cheap. So I recommend having a pasta and sauce meal to go. All you're doing is boiling water, my friends. And I don't care how unsavvy you are in the kitchen, you can boil water. Yes, you can. So here is another don't like to cook, don't cook often, but want a shelf stable meal? This is another option for you. Okay, so my third meal option for you if you're trying to build that emergency pantry really fast is to find some kind of canned protein that you like. Get yourself a protein of your choice and then get yourself some instant mashed potatoes. Now, I know that there are some of you out there that are like, this is a blasphemy to potato lovers everywhere. Friends, if you do not cook and you're not going to keep real potatoes in your house before they go bad and turn green and can poison you, then get yourself some instant mashed potatoes. You are not better than instant mashed potatoes. Have it on your shelf. These last for at least a year. They're in a nice sealed bag, right? All you got to do is boil some water, add some water. If they come with like the buttery seasoning, you don't even need to have extra butter, extra cheese or whatever. It's already in here. Is there a bunch of junk in here? Yes, there is. But this is emergency food, my friends. And this is a heck of a lot 
cheaper than buying those big meal kits from specialty emergency suppliers. My fourth and fifth recommendations as far as having emergency food for folks who don't cook are really just variations on the same theme. The first one is to get yourself some fancy cup of noodles. Now, regular cup of noodles is fine. I don't love them. I don't love ramen, but they are okay in a pinch and they're crazy cheap. The great thing about something like this is these are really lightweight. These are very convenient. There's all you're doing is heating water. <laughs> all you have to do is heat water. You don't have much cleanup. You can cook it right in here. So these are great if you're an apartment dweller and you just want to be able to put something in like a Tupperware under your bed and not have to worry about it. These things last a long time if you keep them, you know, as long as the, the lid stays sealed on there. This is one option. The fourth option is sort of the same theme and that is to get your a bunch of soups. Get a bunch of soups, get a bunch of flavors that you like, get some that are particularly hearty, get the ones that are not a concentrate. So this is not a concentrate. I just pour this whole thing into a pot and heat it or I could drink it plain. One of the great things about soups that are unlike this <laughs> um, is that the ones that don't need to have water added, if you have a water shortage, you just can drink the soup. You don't even have to heat it up. Would it be tasty? I don't think this would be very good cold, but if I was hungry and there was no electricity, I didn't have another heating option, I could still get myself fed. And that is the key, getting stuff on your shelves that you will at least eat, right? Get things that you like, that you're willing to eat, but are easy to prepare, super low maintenance, and then they can sit on your shelves and all you have to do is once a year, go through and, you know, donate the ones that are getting ready to go bad and replace them, okay? We're looking for ease of use. All right, my fifth recommendation for you is to have some mac and cheese. Unless you're someone who absolutely doesn't like cheese, mac and cheese would be an incredibly good comfort food, even if you don't eat it all the time, because if you're in an emergency, you might really want cheese, and if your refrigerator dies and you don't have a way to keep cheese cold, you would be going without for a while powdered cheese to the rescue. You don't have to add the butter and milk to still get something cheesy. You can still literally just add water and have mac and cheese. Now this particular kind, this Annie's, is a gluten-free version of mac and cheese because I have a son who's gluten-free. So we do have some regular mac and cheese and gluten-free. But this is an opportunity where you can stock something cheesy, especially if you, like me, live for cheese. Okay, my sixth recommendation is kind of an abstract one because it really depends upon what you like. And that is to have have like different simple spreads that you could put on like crackers or you could just eat. So for example, I've got some mayo. This is shelf stable. I have to refrigerate it once I open it, but until I open it, it can just sit on the shelves for like a year or two. So I've got some mayo and I've got this skipjack tuna which is a more uh can you, can you guys see that? Let's see here. This is skipjack tuna. Um this is a more ethical dolphin friendly kind of tuna and it's better for you. And so having these on hand mean I can make like a really cheap, lame, but still tasty um, tuna fish that I can mix together and add to crackers or add to bread or just eat that. Because if you're in the middle of an emergency, you might not care so much to make it perfect with like relish, right? So here is some options for what I call like spreads. Another option, a good old standby, and again, this depends upon what you like, is peanut butter. Having peanut butter or cashew butter or almond butter or sunflower butter, whatever you like, and then if you like jelly, get jelly. Having something like this uh, can be a comfort. And this way, peanut butter, tuna, and mayo, and maybe not mixing them all together, would be a really helpful way to create uh, some more diversity and flavors if you have a couple of spreads, if you will. My seventh and final recommendation is for breakfast. And honestly, I think that breakfast is the easiest to prep for because unless you're somebody who's totally grain-free, there's a lot of really easy shelf-stable breakfast items. It's oatmeal or porridge or grits or something like this. They come in little pre-packaged bags. So if you're someone who wants to dip in and use a few, you can do that. You can use a couple and then keep the box. You can also take them out of the box and then store them in a more airtight container that's a little bit safer from pests. But oatmeal is a great one to have on hand and it lasts forever if it's stored properly. And then if you're somebody who likes to have milky oatmeal, you can get shelf stable milk. So just think about it. This has six servings. So you would need in order to get through a month like 
five of these <laughs> to get through having one package every single day of the month. You'd have a few extra, so you would need five of the, five boxes of uh, this oatmeal and then however much milk you would want to put on your oatmeal or use in other ways. And then you just calculate that out and keep it on your shelves and boom, breakfast is done. You don't mind eating the same thing every morning because most of us eat a variation of one to three things for breakfast every morning. So those are my seven meal options for those of you who don't cook but want to have an emergency pantry, but I did promise you a few extras, and one of those is coconut oil. Coconut oil will allow you to cook with oil, so this is a cooking fat that if you needed to cook for whatever reason or you were sheltering in place with someone who had better cooking skills than you, you had a fat that wouldn't go rancid as quickly as something like olive oil. This usually has about a three-year shelf life, they say, so I would just plan to rotate this out every year or two so that you don't have you're not stuck with some rancid coconut oil but the other great thing about coconut oil is that you can easily use this as lotion this is a really great moisturizer for the skin and can be used as an all-body moisturizer including on your face if you need to and so what this does is it allows you to have a cooking oil but then if you happen to be at the end of your like super fancy body butter and you have a lockdown and you can't go out, you actually have a backup body oil that can help keep your body hydrated even if you can't go out and get your nicer lotions and things. So my second special recommendation would be to have some very basic spices. Have a little bit of salt and have a little bit of pepper and even if you just store them with all of your emergency food because you don't cook at all, they're worth having. The other thing I would add specifically is 21 Seasoning Salute from Trader Joe's. This works on almost everything like almost anything can be improved by this if it's savory this really does enhance the flavors so you could use this on pasta you could use this on canned chicken with noodles to create an italian ish something that will be a little bit more palatable than just having plain canned chicken with rice or pasta or whatever you're going to mix it with this just allows you some diversity and flavor to keep you from having some food fatigue. So if you're someone who doesn't cook at all, you don't have a spice cabinet, you're not keeping spices in your kitchen, having this one that you literally store away with all of your emergency food will absolutely save you in an emergency. Trust me, it's worth the money to just buy one of these, even if you don't ever use it. It's worth to have on hand just in case. My third and final special recommendation to go on to this video is to have some freeze dried coffee. If you're a coffee drinker have some coffee if you're not a coffee drinker have some coffee you might want the caffeine or you might be quarantined with somebody who drinks coffee or you might be able to barter it for something that you like better like Prosecco the point is that coffee is something that a lot of us really really enjoy and if you're in a situation where you are having to stay home you are in lockdown in your house whether you're under quarantine whether there's a natural disaster and you can't get out of your house as long as you can boil water you can make freeze-dried coffee and it's so much easier than trying to fool with grinding coffee beans or even using a French press, which is what we use. Fresher coffee can go rancid. This will last for a couple of years. <laughs> if you keep it uh, stored appropriately with the lid on tight, this lasts a really long time. And so you don't have to worry about the beans going rancid because they've been freeze dried. This means you could buy a jar like this from Trader Joe's or wherever and put it with your emergency gear and then just once a year, look at the expiration date and replace it and then donate this or use this as needed. All right, those are my seven meal recommendations plus three extras to help you if you're not a cook and you don't keep a pantry, get your emergency food storage started. The best way to do this is to make a list of what you're willing to eat and plan out at least two meals a day. You can always add a third meal in. Seven of these, one box of rice, that's dinners for a week. I'm gonna buy two boxes of oatmeal and that's breakfasts for a week. Boom, you have a survival, a week of shelf stable foods and it's not that expensive. Just do that twice and you have two weeks. Do that three times, three weeks, four times, four weeks and you have a nice solid month stockpile. The point isn't necessarily that it's the healthiest or that you're getting a certain calorie count, which is what a lot of preppers will talk about. The point is that you're getting something usable, stable, fast. And if you're not somebody who keeps a lot of pantry items, getting it quick and in a hurry is definitely key. Friends, comment down below and let me know if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions to these super fast shelf-stable meals for folks who don't cook anyway. <laughs> I would love to get a conversation started in the comments where we can share our wisdom together. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and I will see all of you very soon.